How many of you wish you were here last Sunday now and you're going to, yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, with God's shalom, with God's shalom, nothing is missing. We read the, we read the, and this is the, this is the uh, Hebrew form of shalom. And we talked about last week that from God's perspective, uh, things move in an opposite direction than what we move. We, we think that the rising of the sun is the beginning of the day. And actually, the setting of the sun is God's beginning. God begins when we stop. And it's a very important principle to understand that if you want God to begin, there's some things you need to stop. <laughs> I'm just going to say it again because we, do, we work really hard to get to the end of the day. And a lot of times at the end of the day, we're, we're whatever. We're collecting our day. We're saying we're proud of what we accomplished and everything. Not saying God is, doesn't love for you to accomplish things. But at the end of the day, he says, if you'll give me all of that, I will start fresh. I want a fresh revelation from God. How about you? I want a fresh yes from him. I want everything to be fresh. And, and he does his best work when you stop. And so just look at your neighbor and say, that's the counseling you need. And it's two words. You know what it is? Stop it. That's right. Stop it. Y'all remember that video. And so sometimes we just need to stop it. Amen. We need to stop it. Amen. Where are my team at? My, my scripture team. All right. Um, so, so we are, we are engaged in shalom in this house. We're engaged in nothing missing. I really want to be able to feel him in every arena of my life. I want to know that he's involved in every part of me, right? Because he is. He's involved in every part of me. He's involved in my going in. The Bible says he's involved in your coming in, your going out. He's, he's, there. he's there from the rising to the setting. He's there from the setting to the rising. He's there from the, the, the no's to the yes to the maybe's. He's in that, he encompasses that whole sphere. Can you say amen? amen. So I wanted, to, I wanted to share that again with you, that much more than peace or a greeting of hello or goodbye, shalom in Hebrew, read right to left. So he comes from the right to the left. He comes from, come on, the right to the left. So he, he's, he's in the rising of the sun. So he said, if you'll give me the beginning, which is the east. And if you, how many of you understand the, that Jesus was born in the east? East. The east speaks of a lot. And so he comes from here to here. We like to go from here to here. And we, we somewhere in the middle, we meet him. I'm preparing something for next year, and uh, I'm looking at creating a podcast and some other things. And the and and what I'm looking at is is working on something that says on this wise, um, meet me in the middle. Somebody say meet me in the middle, and that's really what Jesus does. He's not afraid to come out to the middle and meet you. He really needs you, though, to engage him. Many of us want God to come and get us. Are you with me? We're rapture ready. And we have, we have been in that for a long time. We were raised in, we're just, he's just coming to get me. He's just coming to get me. But his, his idea is meet me in the middle because he was on his way. He was on his way. Somebody say he was on his way. He was on his way. And when he was on his way, he did more miracles on his way somewhere. He met them in the middle. How many of you are glad God met you in the middle of your life? 
He met you in the middle. And so I want to thank God today for, for completeness. Somebody say completeness. I like, I like to know that God is completing me. I want, I want him I want him in my life. I want to be able to say over him, you complete me. Not somebody I met, not a, not a church, not a pastor, but you complete me. So the, the term shalom read from right to left means completeness. It means wholeness. Somebody say wholeness. wholeness. So if something is complete, what is it not? If it's complete, it's not incomplete. If it's whole, it's what? It's not, what's the opposite of whole? If you're whole, if you're not whole, you are apart. You're broken up. You're pieces. One of the things that RTF is going to do is going to help my wife and I and eventually help all of y'all understand the pieces that are still missing. That, that are still missing and you're operating out of not total shalom. For God to work in your life, he wants to work in a totality in your life. He wants to be welcomed in areas you've shut the door to because you either don't want him there or you don't deem it necessary for him to do that. You got this, right? I got this, God. You don't need to worry about that. I don't need, I don't need that. I don't need that in my world. And at some, at some point, there's some shame involved with that. Because at some point, if you struggle with authority, let's say you struggle with authority. If you struggle with authority somewhere in your world, an authority figure might have shamed you. And so therefore, you, you, shame is connected to authority. Rejection comes through that. Abandonment comes through that. And so, so Papa issues are at an, are at an, at an, at an all-time high because when you talk about, so when people you know, talk about Father's Day, many people don't li like Father's Day at all because they've, they've got bad images of that. So that's authority issues. There's so many issues. My wife and I are finding these to be, and we're going back through these. I love this because there's a scripture in the New Testament that I thought didn't apply to me. <laughs> Did you know there's some scriptures that you may think you're grown out of? That scripture, it says, when you ought to be teachers, you, you may need to go back and get the rudiments again. The rudiments again. And we taught rudiments. We taught what happens when the teacher goes back to school. Did you know to be a good teacher? Come on, my educators in here. Do you know what they, they is a part of your contract? Continuing, Continuing education. And at some point, have you ever met a teacher that doesn't think they need continuing education or they're sitting in the class going, why do I need this? And what you're doing is you're buying into the very thing that your students are getting because what you get, give out, they get. So if you give out, I don't need that, they're going to, you're going to end up, you're going to end up pastoring, oh, excuse me, uh, leading a group of kids that say, why do I even need trigonometry? It's the stupidest thing in the world. And they're just, they're drawing doodling while they're in class. And some of us have been doodling. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. So while yet you need to be, you are in need of this. And so sometimes you have to go, sometimes the teacher goes back to school. And sometimes you, sometimes you revert, sometimes you revert. Sometimes it's like, it's, 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 it's amazing. It, you, you go back to being a kid. Some of y'all have children or you've had children when they were little. And it doesn't matter whether it's a girl or a boy. It's amazing. I would like, when my girls were little, they all would come in the bathroom when I was shaving. And they all wanted to put shaving cream on. And they wanted to do what daddy did. 
And so they had something that wouldn't scratch them, and they would shave, and they were wanting to be me, and I was looking at them, and I was wanting to be them. I was wanting, I wish I could be a kid again. All this responsibility and all this choosing my words and, my God, I'm just messing up daily. And, and I just wish it, I was young and I could say whatever I wanted to say and everybody knows you're just a kid. But when you grow up, you put away those childish things. And sometimes those childish things get out of the toy box. And they end up in your world. And before you know it, you're laying somebody you're giving them down the road at the red light, and before you know it, you've already entered back into adolescence. And God says, now I need to get you back because there's still something in you that needs attention. Something in you that's adolescent in its approach to life, in its approach to relationships, in its approach to, to church, in its approach to mom and dad, in its approach to marriage, in its approach, whatever it is, it's, it's, it still needs to have some attention. So I want all of his shalom. I want to be complete. So I, so I must let him deal with my incompleteness. I want to be whole, so I need to let him deal with my, my split upness, my, my, my tendency to disintegrate when something goes wrong. I wish everybody could hear this message because this is the message of now. I want, I want health. Look at your neighbor and say, health. I drive by Dr. Dr. Kara's business, and, and I will often drive by. She don't even know it, but I stretch my hands over, and I pray over that business because I know what she wants. She doesn't just want patience. She wants health, and she wants health restored in people, right? I need my health back. I need a healthy relationship. But it all starts with his shalom. It starts with him being the health that I need. He has all of this. So, in, in other, in, so I, my unhealthiness, he wants to bring healthiness. Are you with me? Welfare. Shalom means welfare. He wants my welfare. He wants my welfare. He wants me to fare well. He wants me to get through life well. He wants me to get through this next relationship well. He wants it to be well. It's well with me. And I hear that old song, it is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. Father, thank you for your welfare. Thank you for your shalom. Shalom means safety. He wants your safety. What is safety? Anybody have a safety uh, experts at your job? That's all they do is their safety. And they're always looking for something that could fall on you. They're looking for something that could be a safety hazard. Something that could hurt you. And you think they're, you really most of the time think they're overboard. Just okay, that won't hurt nobody. The likelihood of that happening. Get out of my face and, you know, go on down the road. But that their whole job job is safety <laughs> and they want to be they have your best interest well somebody say yeah they're just doing a job but think about shalom think about papa's shalom he says i'm i'm your safety and why would you put yourself in a situation that could harm you and i'm trying to be your safety are you with me today? Soundness. How about soundness? Soundness. That means solid. Sound. The Bible says there's something about having sound doctrine. I don't know where majority of the churches these days with sound 
doctrine. I think they're at a place where if it sounds good to me, that'll become my doctrine. I don't, I don't really like that, that whole church thing or pastor thing that doesn't sound good to me. So I will create my own doctrine. And what happens is, is that that brings up those hidden things of abandonment, rejection, and all those things that are, that are down in there. So you create your own doctrine. And then the Bible says that you find others who have itching ears that feel the same way. Perfectness, prosperity, tranquility, fullness, rest, harmony. And I'll, 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 I can go through these, and I'll keep going through these possibly when I get back. But the absence of discord or strife, that's big. That's big. God's desire for shalom for you is the absence of discord or strife. And I want to say, is that possible? I'm kind of like Bishop Jakes that time. He said, God, just can we get this done without all of the drama, please? I, I, I get it. Come on, somebody. How many of you ever gotten to the place? I get it, Lord. Just please. The drama, though. I don't need the drama. Yeah. And the older you get, the more that seems like. So I'm chasing, if I'm chasing anything, I'm chasing the absence of discord or strife. But that doesn't mean to count lights and pretend like it's not there. Dr. Sumrall used to talk to us about that. He said, some of y'all pastors, you got snake. He said, I was in a service with this pastor. And he was sitting on the front row, and, a, and I was preaching. And the lady comes down the aisle, slithering on, like a snake, hissing at me. And the pastor just looked up and looked at the lights. Mm -mm. There are spirits you have to deal with in your life. God says the absence of discord and strife doesn't just happen. There has to be a force exerted in the spirit. Do you understand that everything in the beginning when God, when God said, let there be light. Are you with me? When God said, when God said, and when God created, the, everything at that point was bending toward chaos. Chaos was the norm. Chaos was the norm. Have you ever met someone that chaos, if they don't have chaos, if they don't, if they don't have chaos, they make it happen? Because chaos, come on, that's the healing of the soul. That's part of these issues that they don't realize. Did you know that children that are, that are mistreated by their parents continually, I mean, we're hearing stories over the last few months that will blow your mind. Boys that are mistreated by their fathers. This one boy was made to, to run in his backyard while his dad shot a BB gun at him. Yeah. And he's supposed to live through that and not have any issues. He's supposed to just come to the altar and you say, in Jesus' name, and he's fine. And he said, yeah, I'm fine, but something needs to be dealt with inside of me. And I got to have, and, and their, their girl, this little girl, and she's a beautiful young lady. And when she was little, her mom, after, when she was born in the hospital, looked at her and told her when she was a grown woman, said, I need to tell you that when you were born, I couldn't take it. You were so so ugly you were so ugly as a child it took me three weeks to find a nanny to come and get you at the hospital now do you think that girl is just going to be fine see we don't we don't we don't know what people have covered that's where shalom has to come in but you have to you have to be an agent of shalom somebody say i'm an agent of shalom i'm an agent of healing one little girl, her mom couldn't f afford a babysitter and left her in her crib for six hours. She went to work and came back home. 
And the little girl had soiled herself because she couldn't get out of the crib. And her mom beat her for soiling herself. And to this day, she has issues with her bowels and has issues. Y'all, this stuff is just not medical. There's stuff that's behind it. When someone acts up, there's something. When you act up, when I act up. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I've lived this. I, I've lived this. I'm continually living this. When we first got to uh, Texas, I'll never forget it. And we were like, we were introduced into this, into this ministry. My father in the Lord and had us come out. And I remember I was, I was just getting there and, and everything just piled on. Have you ever had those days that everything just went wrong? Everything piled on you. And I got at the red light and this guy cut me off. And my kids were in the back seat. And I got, I got on it and chased this old boy down. I did. I chased this Texan down. Dumb. Was that dumb or what? I just moved to Texas. I chased him down. I got out of my car. And he got out. And he was a big old guy. I had a cowboy hat. And all of a sudden, I, I had a change of heart. Oh, my God. I just went, uh, listen, man, I'm sorry, dude. I just, I, just got it. I just got frustrated. You cut me off back there. He goes, you better be sorry. I'll kick you. I mean, he just, he, he went everywhere with me. But, but that was, what was that? Was that just emotions or was there something in me? There was a reaction in me that thought I was the ultimate authority. And I was going to take every action into my hand. And he broke authority and I'm going to be his authority. And I'm going to tell him a thing or two. And I could have woken up, you know, three days later, you know, with, with, with a, looking out of him, with one eye. Come on. <laughs> Y'all know that story, right? This guy that wanted to learn, his wife was never just always on him. And he said, I, he went to a counselor. He said, you need to learn how to be assertive, assertive. And he talked about assertiveness to him. And he said, okay, okay. He said, so the next time she does that, you do this. And so he did. And she went off. And he went, you better get over there and get my socks. And she looked at him. She said, What? She said, how would you not like to see me for a while? And, and, and the guy never taught him what to say when she threatened to leave. How would you not like to see me for a while? And he says, well, what happened? He said, well, sure enough, I didn't see her. I didn't see her for, that was Wednesday. I didn't see her Thursday, Friday, early Saturday morning. I began to see her at the corner of this eye. I mean, you know, those, that's not the way to learn shalom. <laughs> Perfectness, fullness, rest. How about that one? Rest, harmony. What's the absence of harmony? Strife. Shalom. God wants harmony. How about this one? I just love it. Nothing without the, the absence of discord or strife. And that was the piece that's so hard to get to because somehow you think you've got to make that happen. And, and, and discord and strife is tied to roots in you. And God, and God knows how to deal with those roots. But you've got to be able to let him deal. How many of you know roots have fruit? I'm going to say it again. Roots have fruit. And when roots, when, when the fruit of those roots come, you need to be in the company of qualified people who understand how to deal with the root. Because we respond to fruit, not root. All we see is root. That's how, that's how we become shallow in our Christianity. But God wants to deal with roots. He's always after roots. Say it with me. Say, I'm going to let him deal with roots. So that's where we're getting ready to go. Yeah. That's where we're getting ready to go. 
and you know it's a brave it's it's a brave it's it's taking some you know I'm talking to Bishop Garlington and I'm you know but you know every now and then I'm trying to back out but I can't now because he paid for it Dagum it I can't and then I'm talking with my friend who went through it pastor and and he said Bishop I'm telling you you and your church will never be the same again and here's the thing you got to dismiss. you got to dismiss that you're bigger than that. Because I would look at it, I've been doing this for four years. God says, uh-huh. And so, and so I, was, I was like going around with, with RTF. I'm talking to the leaders of this. This thing has been in existence since the 80s. They have over 300 people ministering this all over the world. And I'm saying, I just don't kind of like, they don't look like, they don't have the tenure of the, I've been doing this for, for and then, 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 then. God said, mm -mm. it's not about them, it's about me. And he said, if you don't get this right, I said, okay. And so they gave the couple, and you know what the last name of the couple is that's taking us through? Best. And God said, I've given you the best. Uh, they're probably watching me. But I love you guys. And I know that God is going to do something so good for all of us. See, if you, if you have leaders that can say we don't have it all together, you should be thankful because when you have leaders that say you got to do just like us, uh, one of the problems that I've seen in ministry for years is that people that go on this thing about marriage and, and, they, and the Bible says, I mean, I love marriage and love having conferences and all of that. But don't say we are the picture of marriage. Because about the time, y'all know my story on that. About the time you do that, I invited a couple. And they were, we did it all big up, everything, flyers. And they came in and she had makeup on because she had a black eye. And we found out from one of our, yeah, from one of our leaders, they, were, they worked at the emergency room. And they were in the emergency room two hours before they beat each other up. And they were coming to talk to us about marriage. <laughs> I want you to look at something with me today. Are y'all still with me? I've got just a few more minutes. I want to look at the three first three scriptures in First Thessalonians. Now watch this. You're going to say, how's this tie together? It definitely ties. Avoid every appearance of evil. Okay? Avoid every appearance of evil. This would be in the, uh, Martina, this would be in the, uh, the passion. Let's look at that. Avoid every appearance of evil. Now, and I love this. He said, avoid every appearance of evil. Now, he said, now that you're avoiding that, may the God of peace and harmony. I love this. Say it with me. Say peace and harmony. That's shalom. May the God of shalom. May the God of peace and harmony set you apart. Why would he want to set you apart? Because you're part of stuff that is setting you apart. So, so God needs to get you to part with that that is parting you from him. From his shalom. He has to pull you out of that mindset. He has to pull you out of that, of that reactionary model. Whatever you are, whoever you are, we're all that. So he wants to, he wants to be the God of shalom. That sets you apart, and watch this, making you completely holy. He can make you that. You can't make yourself that. He can make you that. And may your entire being, spirit, soul, and body, be kept completely flawless. This is... This is a prayer that I want in my life. How many of you like to be entire? I love this in the, in the King James. It puts it this way. It says, and the very God. Somebody say the very God. The very God, Woo. The very God of peace. And I love the, even the word, the very, the very word. 
the very word means it, it is tied to a word that has to do with spirit, that a wind, that the wind of God, that he blows in, that he blows in. Have you ever had God just blow in and blow you off of your high horse or whatever you're on? He says, may the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit. See, God is not wanting half of you. He's not wanting a part. He wants all of you. That's why I say these areas of our life that still control us, that we don't want to let him deal with. Really what it is, are y'all ready? I don't know if you're ready. What it is is we don't want to let anybody else know. And so what happens is, is we try to get it by ourselves. And God puts people. And that's why I told you the little story. That's why I've been very transparent with you. Because I go and see the profiles of these people. And I'm just being transparent with you. And I'm looking at their tenure of how long they've been doing it or whatever. And I'm, we're looking at 44 years, whatever. And you're saying to yourself, they don't have it for me. And you're making an assessment. You're value judging and don't know it. Value judging is so dangerous. Because you actually thwart what God has set up. Have you ever gone into that place besides me? I'm just being really transparent with you. But I was just saying, I don't think they're the ones. And so I go through all the ones and I find this one. And the leaders of the entire entire organization said, Bishop Collette, we believe these are the, this is the couple. And I said, you know what? I submit to that. Look at your neighbor and say, I got to learn to submit. And when I learn to submit, I find that God places gifts and he gave gifts unto men. He gave gifts to men. So thank you, Papa. Somebody say it with me. Say thank you, Papa, for the gifts that you gave messed up men, messed up women. Yeah. Oh, I got I got scripture for you for that. Somebody say the whole the whole thing. I want the whole thing. I want my whole spirit. I want my whole soul. I want my whole body. Watch this. Preserved blameless so 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 23 now may the god of peace harmony set you apart making you completely holy and may your entire being spirit soul and body be kept flawless in the appearing of our lord jesus christ the anointing one the one who calls you by name is trustworthy that's the big piece of why abandonment, shame, rejection, fear, control, those issues. The reason why is because we have been shamed by someone we trusted. And therefore, it, it, it comes up. It comes up. And so we feel, we feel shame, and shame comes in so many different places. It, comes, it surfaces in so many different ways. It surfaces at a red light. Come on, somebody. It surfaces at a conversation. It surfaces wherever, wherever. I'm just telling you that we are coming to a place in 2020 where God is going to free us from all of the antibodies of shalom. Everything that shalom wants to be is coming towards you. And I believe in 2020, I really do believe that we're going to get antibodies. We're going to get what, it, what he wanted, the doctor's prescription from heaven so shalom can return to you. So shalom can be expressed through you. So that your shame, control, fear issues, your abandonment and rejection issues don't have to control you any longer. And that you will, you will know and you will begin to trust again. And you will begin to trust Papa through a person again. 
You won't be a loner anymore. You will say, Papa, I trust you through an imperfect vessel. Because in Hebrews, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but he calls imperfect men. That's who he called into the priesthood. So, so may the God of peace just do that for you, even on this day. Can somebody say amen? And then let's move over. Thank you, Lord. Let's go back to one. But, but of the times and the seasons, I want to let you look at that in Th Thessalonians 1. Is, did I give you that one? Yeah. But of the times and the seasons... Brethren, you have no need that I write to you. Is that crazy or what? Because he's saying that you should know. <laughs> he said you really should know this. See, somewhere God has to talk to us like this. And he's got to talk to you. He's got to say, Ron, and Kathy, you know, Mary, you should know this by now. That shouldn't have surfaced. But because it did, it's obvious there's other ministry that has to take place within you. And while you're being, watch this, while you're being ministered to, you're still ministering to somebody else. This is the, this is the, the mark of God's grace. This is the mark of mercy. While you're messed up, you're getting other people fixed. Go figure. While you're so messed up. Listen, and I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not spouting names, but we have buried a lot of preachers. And I'm, I don't know of one time that I know of, of, of Reinhard Bonnke just messing up, but I'm sure he's made some boo-boos. But 70, 79 million people said yes to Jesus over his 79 years of existence. He got something right. But toward the end, I see men start to start to get this, and women start to get this, I got it all. And that's the peace that God is challenging. Bishop Garlington, come on, my 80-year-old dad and mom. By the way, thanks for praying for Pastor Barbara. She got through her surgery like, like amazing. And Bishop Garlington wants us to pray, and I hope you're not watching, Mom. <laughs> But I don't think you are. I don't think anybody watches me anyway. But, uh, hey, see that shame? See that? See that? See that? You see it? It's going to come up. It'll come up. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. She, he said, please pray for her. I said, was well, she okay? He goes, she's, she's doing great, but she won't sit down. He says she won't rest. She just had major hip surgery, had the old one taken out and the new one put in or whatever, and she's up like cooking and, and going and doing her healing service. He said, I'm just like, and I thought about that story, and uh, I told him about Bob Fierro and how, you know, and, and his wife was like telling him to sit down. When God healed him off of a cot, and he had terminal melanoma, and he was on, he was on a cot praying for people in, in Puerto Rico, and they would put his hand over their head, and people would get healed, and here's a man dying of melanoma, eating his spine up, and people are getting healed. And they held a microphone to him. He was in so much pain, couldn't even hold a microphone. And that bone, that bone was eating, and that was eating, that cancer was eating his, his bone marrow. And he said, I was just reading a scripture. If the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwells in me, he will quicken my mortal body. That's the way he preached. He says, and I said it, and when I said it, he says, I jumped out of that bed like greased light. <laughs> he says, and I ran around that platform five times, a hundred feet long, 30 feet wide, 100 feet long, five times. He says, and my wife was on the side, the little woman that prayed for me every day to be healed. She was over on the side. Ay, ay, Roberto, Roberto, sit down. Sit down, you may kill yourself. And he's going, the devil is alive. 
He says the only thing was there was a bed and a wheelchair. And he says, I pushed them off the platform. He says, and God broke. And he's telling this story on TBN months later. And the guy had no neck. His head was sitting right down on his shoulders. And God literally took that bad part of his neck and he literally took it out and fused his head back onto his neck. Paul Krauss asked him, he says, Brother Fierro, just tell us exactly when, when, like when, when did you really get your healing? He went, 2,000 years ago. When did you get really free? 2,000 years ago. When did you really get free? 2,000 years ago. You just don't have access yet to the complete freedom. But God will use men and women like me and like you to help somebody get in and get free from those pains. Those pains of death that Jesus triumphed over in the book of Acts. Being loosed from the pangs of death. P-A-N-G. Study it. He was loosed from that. If he was loosed from it, you can be loosed from it. Man, I'm feeling my, my, I'm feeling my oats here this morning. So somebody say, you should know this by now. Why? You should know. But this generation is being bombarded. All of us have been bombarded of weapons of mass distraction. Distractions. We should see. You know, I mean, really, we should really see. We got so many clues now. I mean, we got so many clues. It's really, I mean, come on. You can just turn on your phone. You get clues every day. This is the age of information. We should, we should know. First Chronicles 12, 32. And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. We have to become children of Issachar. Men and women of Issachar. God says, I want to give you understanding of times and know what Israel ought to do. Look at your neighbor and say, I gotta, I gotta know what the church ought to do. I gotta know what they ought to do. I don't need to be in the dark about this. I don't need to be in the dark, but I'm still wrestling with my own inadequacies. I'm still wrestling with my own, come on, my own, my own, my own, my own stuff. And yet God is giving me revelation for you. Oh, wretched man that I am. Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. Oh my God, how could you even use me? I had this angst against you, God, and I took it out on men and women. It's one of the questions in our profile. Have you ever been mad at God? See, most people won't say nothing. Paul said, oh, wretched men, why? And he got angry at the fact. David got angry at the fact. Why did the heathen rage? And why, did, why, why does everybody else get it? Why is everybody always picking on me? <laughs> Men that had understanding of the times. Don't stick your head in the sand and say, I don't need to know about all of this that's going on. You need to have understanding of the times. Doesn't mean that you have to cooperate with it you got to have understanding of it. See, if I understand you, then I can stand under you. I can get some, I can get some revelation and prop you up now because I understand you. Now I'm standing under you. But oh, shy. I understand the times. I understand the times. That's not the New York or Washington times. Come on, somebody. To know what Israel ought to do. How many of you know that Israel ought to do something? The church ought to be doing something. That makes sense? Look at your neighbor and say, you ought to be doing something about that. If somebody says that to you, you ought to be doing something, that means you have, you actually have some permission and you have authority. Hold on, my shia. The heads of them were 200. 
I just, I just like this. And all their brethren were at their commandment. That's amazing. Hebrews 5.1. St- stay with me here. Just give me a few more minutes. For every high priest, watch this. I'm trying to bring balance to this because you have to understand that even though ministers are held in this place, they're this and they're that and he's a bishop and he's this and that. And I told the Lord until this day, I never wanted this. I'm mad at you from even even mentioning it to Bishop Owens. Because when they said, you are now this, I didn't know what this was. And just a few months ago, I really got clarity on what that was. When the man, Dr. Ron Cottle, stood in this pulpit. Because it's been, it's been from Council of Nicaea, I mean, you can go all the way back. It's been completely out of order. And we're now coming from bishops to apostles. And we're, we're understanding what that means. That doesn't mean you have a right to abuse people. You have a right to use people. You have a right. You have a no right there. You're just standing. <laughs> You're just standing in it. And he says, okay, let me, let me do something that's a part of my order. And when I order it, you can't claim to be the chef. I'll let you chew on that. You're just my servant. How many of you have ever seen waitresses and waiters get penalized for what the chef did? They penalize the waitress. Come on, Martina. And it really wasn't your fault. You were just delivering what was given to you. And what happened is, is that you got, you got a menu online. You had, I mean, when I say we got some information, how many of y'all, how many of y'all been to a restaurant before you even got there? And you saw everybody's picture of what the lobster thermidor looked like. Come on, or whatever. And you got a picture. Y'all remember back in the day when y'all used to eat like this? You don't eat it like this anymore. But when you used to go to Denny's, remember way back in the day? (laughs) Remember those pictures? Man, those pictures of all of that food. How many of you know that's the most dangerous thing a restaurant can do? Because they have to live up to the picture. And so when it comes, you say, that don't look like what you sold me. Look at your neighbor and say, you better learn. Or like Amy says, you better. Come on, say it. You better. Say, you better learn to close your menu and stay out of the kitchen. Because Jesus said, I got meat to eat that you don't even know about. He said, I got stuff to eat you don't even know about. And the children of Israel said, what is this? Right? They woke up. They had visions of bread, right? He said, in the morning we'll rain bread. And they were just vision. They, they had a bread Holy Ghost revival meeting. And they were, the kids were, you know, drawing loaves of bread. And, and they had loaves of bread around their neck and flannel or whatever. And everything was about bread. And the evangelists talked about the bread of God. And, and you see big loaves. And the next morning they went out and there's a little small round thing, the Bible says. And they looked at it and they said, what is this? What is this? Manna. Manna doesn't mean bread. Manna is the Hebrew form of question. What is this? 
And that's exactly what you need. You need something you can't explain. You need something that's going to take you on the journey of getting some answers. Because you need some answers to why you you do what you do and how you do. And God says, I'm going to feed you with your question if you'll just let me in that shalom space. So I'm going to create a space. This is what I want to do. Father, I want to create a shalom space. I want, I, want a, I want a space. I want a space that's called grace. I want a space where you can have compassion on the ignorant through me. Hebrews 5. All the way through, and you need to take that this week. But, but, but the, verse, the verse I wanted you to hear is that he ordained men. Somebody say, every high priest, every minister, ordained by God is taken from regular folk. (laughs) Taken from men. And then he shows them what Israel ought to do. I, I, I believe God wants us to I won't believe God. How many of you know God can give us some real practical warriors? See, there's room for all of you in the kingdom. There's room for the technical warriors. How many of you know there's some that know that Israel ought to do this? Thank God Israel, right, bought those those Patriot missiles a few years ago, kept them from getting a lot of people killed. Somebody thank God for the technology. I thank God for everybody that's in the, that's in my sphere. Because God knows what I ought to do, and he knows what you ought to do. And he has people in your world that help you get to the issues that's keeping you from having compassion on the ignorant and those that are out of the way. Why? Because I forgot who I was. Because he said in verse in verse 3 or verse 2, he says, "For by, because he himself was encompassed. Woo! About the time I'm throwing, come on, shade on you, God's showing how much shade I've come. I come out of a real shady past. Look at your neighbor and say, a lot of shade up in here. But the only thing that... Ha- Watch this. The only thing God can do with shade is he casts light. That's what the cross is for. That's why light, what, is, what casts a shadow? Somebody say an object standing in light. So if there's still shade, just know this, there's light showing on you. So I, I somewhere, somewhere, I don't deal, I don't deal I don't let you deal necessarily with all of my shade. I'll let Papa deal with it. But if God gives you a word for me, I'll, I'll take it right now. Somebody say, take it right now. But it better be a word. Somebody say, it better be a word. Amen. And let me get, let me get to the scripture. Verse 12. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, <laughs> you have a need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such that have need of milk and not just strong meat. Every now and then, somebody say, every now and then, you need a glass of milk. So for what that's worth, I'm going to ask that this scripture become just our prayer today and to be your prayer over our our week your intercede for us we'll probably be drinking some milk and I don't know we might get some strong who knows what we might get I have no idea but I know we're going to get ministered to and we're going to bring it back to you we're going to bring it back to you and may 
verse 23 of 1 Thessalonians 5, and the very God of peace. Stand on your feet and bless you today with this. The very God of peace sanctify you, separate you, keep you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, I pray, God, your whole soul, I pray, God, your whole body be preserved. So preserved, blameless. I want you to just hold your body right there. Hold your body. So I'm going to pray that, that that word comes to pass with you. That you get to that place right here today. Father, thank you that the God of peace is coming right here, right here, right now. Shalom, come. Now sanctify them. Sanctify them. Sanctify them right here in this moment. Make holy, purify, consecrate, even, ven even mentally venerate them. Mentally venerate them. That's what that word means. Right now. Right now. Let it be. 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 And now, Lord, let their whole body, spirit, and soul now, I'm asking you to preserve the moment. Now, watch what he's saying. So he wants you to be preserved blameless. You follow what he's saying here? He wants you to be preserved. He wants you to take this moment and not let it go. Don't go back into that old way of thinking. But God's preservation is on this moment. And he's going to seal it. And you will know it. Somebody say, I will know it. You will know it when those old thoughts try to come back to you right now. And God's going to begin to talk to you about issues of abandonment. He's preparing you, guys. I'm telling you, he's preparing you for what we're being prepared for. And I'm telling you, there's life. There's life. There's so much life after 2019 for you. You're not coming into a year of drudgery. You're coming into a year of release, a year of letting go, a year of things dropping off of you, a year where God is going to completely heal you, spirit, soul, and body, and he's going to preserve what he heals. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's going to preserve it. He's going to put some salt in it. He's going to put Boshaya, a salt covenant. We're going to do some more salt covenants with one another. And there's going to be a preserving now. You don't have to keep walking through the same stuff. Give me your hand. Thank you, Lord God, for the preserving, for the salt. You're preserving when I spoke about those children Stephanie your heart broke because your heart breaks for children who've been abused and yet the people that I heard this from are people who lead the organization we're going to this week and they said amazingly God healed and delivered those children they were trapped in older bodies because they'd never left that backyard being shot at by their dad or the crib being left for six hours and punished because you soiled yourself or all of those. And the Holy Spirit said, I've shown you this. I've shown you this. And God said, you're my agent of healing, even for the children. Did you know the children's bread is what Jesus said healing was? Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Thank you for preserving now what you're doing in Kimberly today. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody in this room has to say this with me. Say, I can't look back any longer. I must take what he did and go forward. Now that doesn't mean you won't deal with things, but you can't be that person 
You follow what I'm saying? You are born again by the precious blood of Jesus. And so now through the integrated approach of ministry we're going to bring to you, you're going to see that you are now, you are born of the Spirit. Now you've got power to delineate and to disintegrate those demons of fear, shame, control, abandonment, and rejection in the name of Jesus. Anybody besides me ready to go on this journey? You guys want to go on this journey with us? Well, Father God, thank you. Now, I want you to come, Kathy, Mary, somebody could go get Pastor Nick. I want you to pray over me and Anthony and Nadine. Pray over me and by proxy my wife who's preparing for this week. Would you all pray for me and pray for us? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If God gives you any words, just pray. Stretch your hands out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He declares the end from the beginning. Thank you, Lord. All that's needed now is to walk through the process. I will be with you every step of the way. You will not stumble. You will not fall. I will be able to keep you. I will keep you. This is my promise. I am the God who cannot lie. I said it. I'll do it. I spoke it. I'll bring it to pass. Thank you. Put up other Everything, everything that God has for you, and then to seal it by your Holy Spirit. Mm. Mm. Oh God, thank you. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you. Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. I receive. I receive the prayers of the saints. Spirit saying that he's giving you a peace and it's it's a peace that cannot be shaken it's a peace that Bishop it's coming in right now it's coming in and it's filling you it's filling you it's fill it's filling I hear the word the, the cavity I don't know what that means maybe it's the, the chest cavity but there's a peace that's it's coming in. I can feel it. It's it's coming right in. It's going right in. It's a peace that cannot be shaken. And it's filling. It's almost like your lungs can almost explode because they're, they're just going to fill up so much with peace. And that peace cannot be shaken. And for Pastor Tori, it's something about that even when she's in, in the shower, and she's preparing and she's getting ready. Down inside of her body, she shakes her hair. And as she shakes, she's shaking, she's shaking. The peace cannot be shaken off of her. It cannot be shaken off of her. It's just like, like the steam from the shower going into her body. And she just would not be shaken, will not be shaken. Because even everything that, that comes up, everything that comes up, it will not be shaken. Because the peace that is going into and filling up her body, filling up your body, I just keep hearing that word, cavity. The cavity, it's filling up the cavity with peace. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You tell us we're complete in you. Lord, you've given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. 
all things you've given to us. And so, Father, I thank you as Bishop and Pastor Tory go, that they will be exposed to what is necessary, cultivation, watering, irrigation, pulling out of weeds, so the manifestation of the fruit of everything that you've given to us will manifest in our lives. The fruit of righteousness. You've given us the gift of righteousness. The fruit of righteousness will manifest what's already in them and in us. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for this open door. It's a door that you have opened. It's a wide door. It's a big, wide door. Father, we thank you for the plans that you have for Bishop and Pastor Tory. Father, we thank you, dear God, that they're going to experience your love. Your love in just such an amazing way that, Father, we thank you you're here with them. You go with them to Nashville, dear God. And Father, you're waiting there with arms wide and welcoming them. Father, we thank you, dear God, that you're going to draw them so, so close. They're going to feel the beating of your heart, dear God. Papa, thank you. Yes, the beating of your heart. He's going to feel the beating of your heart, too. He feels it. He's going to fill you up. He's going to fill you up. Father, we thank you. You're going to lay it all down before him. You're going to lay it all down before him. You're going to give everything, dear God. Father, we thank you for those victories, dear God. But, Father, we thank you for those disappointments. You're just going to lay them all down. Every frustration, every disappointment, you're laying it all down. He doesn't care. He just wants it. He just wants you. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you, dear God. Mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Thank you, dear God. That love is going to flow deep. Thank you that they're going to hear that still, small voice, dear God, calling them, loving on them. Thank you, dear God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, dear God. Father, we thank you for every word that has been spoken over Bishop and Pastor Tor all these many, many, many years, dear God. Father, for them as individuals, dear God. And Father, we thank you, dear God for the fulfillment of those words. But Father, we thank you for new words that are spoken over them as a couple, as a husband and a wife, dear God. Father, we thank you, dear God. Father, we thank you. You're going to bring them into a deeper relationship. Father, the love is going to flow between them in new ways, dear God. Father, we thank you above and beyond, dear God, what they ever imagined and hoped for, dear God. Father, we thank you. Thank you, dear God. We speak those words and we agree, dear God, that you would bless them, dear God, that you would bless them, dear God, as you prepare them for this new season, dear God, as you prepare them to walk through that wide, big door. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bless them, bless them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. 
Mm. Mm. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you, dear God. You're, that we are the hundred of the sheep that, that you haven't forgotten. That thank you, dear God. And, and even as we feel that love here this morning, Father, and, and those that we may know and those of our loved ones that are on our heart this morning, Father, we thank you, dear God, that, that you haven't forgotten. There's nothing that can stop them from, nothing that can separate them from your love. Nothing. Nothing. It goes beyond us, dear God. And so, Father, we carry that. We carry that, dear God. We thank you, dear God. And so, Father, as we go forth, just release that love. Father, let us be conduits, dear God, for that love to flow, dear God. Let us be conduits, dear God, to those who have nothing, dear God, who have no hope, who have no healing. But, Father, we...